All right, Davey, let me ask you something. When you parried that rage drive, were you were you at all panicking or did you see it coming? I had no, like, was I, well, I definitely knew he was gonna do it. Yeah, that's that was one of those things. Have you ever, um, have you ever tried to parry it from like close close range? I most people don't do it that close because they they need the distance most of the time, or else it just becomes a forward one. Yeah, yeah. It, it's I haven't really fought a player who has like a really good inst- instant while running move, like yeah. skill. But most of the time with the EX versions of like while running moves, you can see the wind up. There's like a certain frame that if you just picture and memorize, you can tend to find them because those moves, the plus moves tend to be the most rewarding. So as some gin player, you tend to look out for them. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, yeah. if, if those haven't figured out, you are, you are a gin player. For those who don't know, <laughs> give us a, a brief rundown about yourself. Uh, my name is uh, Davey. Uh, I go by the name of Caboose. Um, I joined the FGC, was it like a year ago, maybe? Yeah, year, pretty recent. Year two ago? Yeah. yeah, it was pretty recent. Um, Tekken is my only fighting game. Um, and I find it pretty, pretty fun. But as you know, as the state, as a uh, state of the game at the moment is a a bit dry, isn't it? Without any of the locals, huh? Yeah, definitely, very dry. Um, although briefly mentioned that we've just gotten out of lockdown per se, so offlines are potentially returning. But we'll definitely touch on that. Um, but then, just the development of the game overall, do you feel like it is dry? Um, of you know, because of lockdown and because of the things happening in the world, that the game just isn't getting that much technical attention. Yeah, well, I I think most of the time, it's it's been like this for a while. Like this is how Bandai Namco kind of they kind of just develop by themselves, while most of the audience kind of just enjoys the game until said tournament, said tournament announcement, you know. But without any like offline tournaments, you can start to see how the net code is really. Like affecting like the flaws tend to show more obviously especially to like people who only play online yeah it's it's like one of those things but i mean it's, 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 uh, yeah you go man you go uh, this happens in fighting games in general actually but tekken's tekken's net code is not like n- amazing either yeah especially with um the situation where maybe not a lot of offline players have to commit to online now maybe not so much us re- you know recently mm-hmm. due to you know us being covid free um but yeah you're a gin main um now what made you strive down this path because when we met you were actually jamming asuka and i remember the first time we ran into it i remember the first time i ran into you <laughs> i was like this guy just does can can tries to get back four counter hit i was like i don't i don't like this guy at all <laughs> Back four? <laughs> I think it, I think it was back four. Or, 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 Are you no, sure it like, wasn't back three? Back, oh, back three. Oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> back three. Yeah. Well, I just remembered. I was like, Asuka, Jesus, playing again. I'm not the worst offender. I think Hamish is worse. <laughs> yeah, probably. Back back three into crouch while standing three into while standing three. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, fair to say, she's got some really unique moves, like unique moves that have good properties. And then I, yeah. and then we ran into each other like a month or so later, or maybe even sooner. And you were playing Jin, and yeah. uh, I had only seen your Jin obviously once, and it was like the execution between when we first met to, you know, meeting later. I was like, holy, like Jesus, this guy's bloody got it going on. <laughs> you, you're too kind. Um, I mean, you, you're like you're dashing up doing electric. So I'm thinking, Jesus, this guy's confident, you know. Well, <laughs> it's like the funnest thing about playing any character that can wave dash and stuff. Um, but the reason why I played Asuka kind of goes all the way back to when I first started playing Tekken. Um, so my first game was actually Tekken 5. And that was during the late PS2 era. 
when everyone was just like selling the PlayStation 2s for like dirt cheap because um, I think PlayStation 3 was coming out at that time. Yeah. And I eventually got Tekken, just the Tekken 5 no DR. And um, Asuka was one of them, like on the intro movie, she was one of the first characters to show up. She was like literally like the first first character, eh? Like after the yeah, like Kazuya yeah. and Heihachi. Yeah, yeah. After the after the explosion, after the dojo, the birds so, like flying and yeah, you yeah. You're on the tower thing. Yeah, so I was. I assumed she was like one of the important characters, and I think I think she looked really cool in Tekken Five, and she did her her martial arts based off Ikaido. So it's like redirecting your opponent's um, energy, energy in a different, them. yeah, back at them or around you, kind of like through the side or you know. Mm. Um, and I thought that was cool, so I started playing her in Tekken Five. Managed to get through story mode, just can canning and back three into forward two combos, just the two hits. Because I was like, what? I think I was in like intermediate. I didn't. The internet wasn't as well developed, so and since I was at home playing by myself with my brother, we we didn't really know what combos are and how it worked and how anything worked really. Like three, we we only um, we had had such a hard time fighting the last boss because we didn't really know how to sidestep either. Yeah. So it's like thinking back, you're like, I knew nothing, and um, you know, just typical. Te- like casual Tekken player, open up the move list. Oh, I see the ten hit move string. Yeah, that, I gotta learn that <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, man. So when Tekken Seven came out on consoles, I was like, oh, I used to play Tekken, and we bought it, uh, and we just had like you know your house party, and then everyone kind of took turns. It was like about seven or eight of us. And I noticed that there was Asuka on there. I was like, whoa, she's still in the game. And just started playing her from there. I actually got absolutely destroyed by everybody because um, I was playing more patiently because I was trying to figure out all the moves again. But then everyone else was just mashing. So it's just like, oh, uh, <laughs> what do you do? You know, like I, I ended up like, Okay, I'm gonna try to actually learn these to like beat all the people at the my party, and eventually, you know, they're outgrew them basically because yeah. you know, and it turns out no one wanted to play with me anymore because that's how cause it always they, is. They, man. Like the friends, yeah. you, you always want to play together with like your mates, and then as soon as one becomes truly exceptional, they're just like, oh, nah, we'll just like, no, nah, we won't, no, no, no. But have you tried this game yet? <laughs> Yeah, it's because they didn't like. It's just the like the insane damage output of combos is just as a casual player, and you and if you don't know combos, it's it like it's instant turn off yeah. for like playing. It's the oh, I don't want to play you. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of yeah. So then, how did you how did you find our scene? Was it um, was it Mia or was it another player that told you of the? Oh, uh, so. After the whole growing to like a, a new a, a better player, and then not playing at the parties anymore, like the house parties, I eventually went looking for arcades. Um, I noticed there was a time zone at BK, and I was like, I went down there with my girlfriend because we we normally just go there for for dates and stuff, and we walk around and have some food and then i just i noticed that there's always like tekken machines there and what when when console release came out still but then i noticed they had fight sticks and i was like oh how does people how do people with controllers play so then i just i was just sitting there watching and there was like this korean guy with glasses just absolutely smashing everyone because he had like he was playing with his friend he was just having fun i could tell he was going easy yeah. and then that person who like uh his friend played yeah. another dude who absolutely and then that dude just smashed him <laughs> so his so the korean guy versus the guy who beat his friend and yeah. then he absolutely destroyed him 
and then he just walked up and left. I was like, oh gosh, that was <laughs> that was insane. So I actually challenged him, and oh, you challenged um, the dude. I challenged the dude who was winning, like beating everybody. Yeah, and first thing I did because <laughs> I would, I basically learned through treasure battle because <laughs> you know <laughs> that, yeah. that was like the. You you already know how how well that went, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so the first thing I did was when as soon as the round started, I forward two because <laughs> I said, I'm not touching. The I'm bots, not touching. Yeah. The bots didn't know how to block, so I didn't know they didn't know how to block because I didn't know how like the bots think or what they were intending to do. But anyway. I got launched, as you would assume, and I got taken to the wall and got absolutely wrecked because the character that he was using just absolutely destroys with a wall transition, and it happened to be like a perfect one. It was it even uh, looking back. I even looked up the combos. It's it's one of the most optimal, and you could probably guess who it was if I told you the character. Tell me who it is. But do you do you want to know? Do you want to have a? Do you want to take a quick stab? Uh, yeah, yeah, I want to know. Or do you want to guess? No, no. If you t- well, if you tell me the character, I think I know who you're talking about. Of course, it was Lily. Shit, I knew it. But no offense, as soon as you said Korean, like <laughs> glasses, I was like, I know that son of a bitch. <laughs> it's like yeah, I know, know. Seville, the dog, yeah, oh, the doggy dog, dude. Nah, he's yeah, he's he's a real yeah, he's an interesting cat, man. No matter whether he wins or he loses, he always shakes his head in disapproval, and it's like, dude. You just yeah. run around. Why? Why? Why do you look so upset or so, like you should be, you know, like feel good? But yeah, it's almost like no, no. It's like he needs to always get the optical, optimal combo in the situation. You know, yeah, I get what you mean though. He's his his combo execution, but also as you said, the op how optimal he makes his combos. It's you know, like getting that five six extra damage. It really makes a difference. You know. Yeah, it's very strict. But at that point in time, I wasn't at that level, so he didn't really need to shake his head in disapproval. So he was he was more like, you're doing all right. You're doing well. And I was like Patted really confused. Shoulder, just like, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah. Because at that point, uh, the only thing I knew was combos. Mm. I, knew, I, I knew how to transition into wall and do wall combos and stuff like that. I knew all my combos and all my counter hit combos. But I didn't know anything about frames. I didn't know about blocking. Didn't know about you know waiting my turn, things like that. And he told me about frames, and then I started to like look deeper into the game, and that's yeah. when I found out how it was so in depth. Especially since um, between Tekken Five and Tekken Seven, I actually went to martial arts training. Oh, sweet! And the reason why I feel like I didn't take um taken five is seriously is because i had a it's like a lack of understanding it's more like i feel like taken's like a game that the more you know it's the more interest the more interesting it is yeah except for like people who've been playing it for like 30 25 years you know because they mo they know a lot of the game and how it works now but generally speaking like when i came back to playing taken seven and learning all the intricacies of the game I found it resembling a lot like mush- the martial arts I was taught. What what, what martial arts did you do, bro? I did kendo, which is the way of the sword. Ken ken meaning like sword, and do is to like the way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So like there, there's heaps of ri- like um, similar things about it. Like there was because kendo is like. Japanese fencing, right? Samurai, yeah. samurai martial arts, and basically, um, you you have your your two people that they're basically dueling, just like how you are in Tekken, and you have to measure your distance. And some people may be taller, so they might have more range, but sometimes you can make them whiff and things like that. You can go for like high mid lows because high would probably be the head the the mids would be like um, their hands and lows would be their waistline because, you know, you can like go hit, get a hit strike, get a hand strike and then get a waist strike because you go across. Have you ever seen those samurai movies, how they just go right to the side? Yeah. 
and they just kind of slice in half kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a lot of things like that that reminded me of Tekken, especially like taking turns, like frames, like plus because plus on block and things like I found like electric represents the main cut of kendo because the main cut of kendo is you, you strike them on the head if they block it you you just collide with them and because of your forward momentum um you push them back and they're on the back foot so it's almost like just because you went you you're at an advantage and you have you're controlling the the, ba- the pace of the battle yeah yeah, it's, it was just like a lot of little things like that that yeah. just made me think. And if you notice how um, you when you hold forward and back, you kind of like your character kind of just slides across the floor. Yeah. You know how can and can uh, and taken. No one does that. No one does the little squiggles. Yeah, or like slidey. I don't know. But in in kendo, it's called suriashi, and the reason why they. Yeah, it's called f- like it directly means it means footwork basically, and it, the reason why they're like sliding their feet across the ground is so they can feel if it's uneven, so they don't accidentally trip over. Minding their surroundings, yeah. Yeah, minding their surroundings because if if you fall in, in kendo, you're dead because one strike, you're dead. Yeah, it's like and then Korean backdash movement it, it you have to train it right it's like a muscle memory yeah so when you're doing kendo you also have to do like that footwork but it also becomes muscle memory because you don't cross your feet you you push your right foot forward and then you drag your left foot back like you push off with your left foot like it's it's like right left right left right left it's not like you don't cross your feet over how you know when you walk you know how you yes yeah you walk yeah it goes up, like over, but your left foot is always behind your right foot in kendo. Yeah, so it's kind of like Korean backdashing. I was like, that's so similar. Mm. That's a cool. That's a cool way of um, <clears throat> using that that experience in kendo to to fuel your desire to learn Tekken. Now, what made it so that you went? So I'm guessing you explored with Asuka. So how did that change? to gin so um with asuka i actually found the more i learned her i the the less fun she was i guess um mainly because she on paper she's not like the greatest character she has a lot of slower moves and a lot of moves that aren't like good on the frames yeah she's, if you yeah, will she's not an aggressor not a good 10 frame jab um, but like, yeah, as I said, that, she's that got those really... moves that are very unique, you know, like high and low crush moves. Uh, her one plus two yeah. is safe on block launcher. Um, yeah. yeah, things like yeah, things like that. I found that I didn't like her. Um, um, how do I say? I didn't like how she didn't have many plus on plus on block moves, and <laughs> yeah. She, I hated her punishment. Like that's one one thing I hated because I hated back when I was playing Asuka. Sh- I think her while standing three was like minus nineteen. Yeah, it was so huge. like, yeah, so like you'd have Heihachi down back two, and I couldn't launch it. Yeah, it only and only in season two when it got like sped up by one frame, then I could launch it. It was it was things like that, like um. Block punishment. Um, she didn't have a hop kick. Yeah, not a conventional oh, wait, hop kick. Yeah, not a conventional hop kick. And I found that a lot of her moves were kind of unsafe. Yeah, and it's just like you just basically chip away your opponent until they do something risky. But yeah, I want to have. She's very, um, very set upy in a sense, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to have a bit more control and a yeah. Yeah, things we, like that. Well, you definitely have it with Jin, though. He can be aggressive. Um, the electric, the perfect electric. Um, wave dashing, decent moves with damage as well. Um, how long did it take to actually perfect? Well, I mean, wave dash is something you just get used to in time. But in order for your wave dash to be, you know, how did you get so efficient in wave dashing? Because I think when people learn wave dashing for the first time, they get the motion. But obviously, you know, beginner people 
as soon as they're wave dashing, you know they're not blocking, and so you just catch them with counter hits. Um, yeah. So, so how long did how how what was that process like learning to effectively wave dash? Um, well, wave dashing was kind of more natural to me because I spent a lot of time learning movement. That was one of the things that I focused on mainly as a beginner, because everyone was just like, "Oh, you gotta you gotta back dash, gotta you know control space and things like that." So that was the main thing I learned, um, other than combos. But with the method I was using was um, like the quarter circle motion. So wave dashing on the right side became natural. Yeah. Um, I wanted to get better at it so i just practiced more and more um and i actually liked Jin in tekken 5 but um i couldn't play him because i found he was really slow but that's because i didn't know his fast moves yeah and i feel like with Jin, it takes us like you need a certain amount of like execution before you can actually do well with him yeah. or like at least um how he's meant to be played yeah you're right there's execution um and I, as i was saying the efficiency because newbies can wave dash but then you know they're vulnerable to attacks because they don't they're not that um you know not able to to, to you know what i mean just being able to stop the wave dash at any one time and if they you know anticipate the opponent attacking um and as such so like when you try to learn it on one p because obviously we all learn it on 2P first, it's more natural. But then going to 1P, um, yeah, how was that? Oh, that was kind of rough. <laughs> but but uh, I actually liked playing 1P more than 2P. Um, because I I think I value backdash more than wave dash. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Because, um, yeah, I, I prefer with punishing than to... To, cl to always be up in their face because you know Jin Jin's forward four allows him to just always control the mid space yeah. and that's always what I think is you should play optimally what's always uh, until until they fear it yeah what's um what's uh what else has Jin got in this season that is um really underappreciated hmm underappreciated i don't know i think forward one plus two is amazing but i don't know if it's underappreciated it, it, it was kind of like the biggest buff he he got i think and uh, either that or the underappreciated because Jin didn't actually have that many changes to be honest um it was just forward one plus two and he got the new the new move that allowed him to have easy electric combos. Z uh Zen Zen one three. Z one three. Zen yeah, Zen one three. Zen three. Yeah. yeah. I um yeah, I mean Jin's always been a real fun character. Um but obviously because he's a a Mishima hybrid, you know, that execution. Um Yeah. Do you do you ever do you ever second guess do you ever second guess playing Mishima when you are being competitive, like because you look at someone like Sevio Lily, you know, like Lily isn't execution heavy, but she gets the damage quite easy. So how do you, yeah, how do you find that balance to use Jin when other characters get almost the same damage? Well, first off, is Jin considered a Mishima? I always get confused. Well, like people always have no, arguments well, talk, about. Well, I mean, when you're talking about electrics, they they say Mishimas. And Jin, you know, like he's just the <laughs> the the exception, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I so mean, is he? Yeah, because nah, Jin's actually quite. Nah, he's not. Like, as, he's yeah, he's, good... he's he's kind of un he's kind of unique. I mean, at least he has a general hop kick. Um, yeah, yeah. I, Although I don't. I, yeah, <laughs> I use his can can more than his hop kick. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and can can too. Which which is pretty fair because I mean that's his that's his launch punishing move. Whereas Kazuya and like from standing, because you're in Heihachi, they don't really have anything. I think. Well, yeah, Devil Jin has. I mean, has I mean you've too. got electrics, but hey, that's if you can pull it off at the at the right time. That's crazy. Uh, electric, yeah. 
I would never. Be, I don't think I'd ever be able to do that during tournament to like electric block punish. That's just a bit. That's like like not when especially it's minus, uh, like not when it's minus fifteen, like when it's like minus nineteen and stuff. Probably, but maybe, no, maybe yeah. but then I could just can can, you know? It's like yeah, can can. But I guess you, it just depends. Maybe like maybe the distance is not further far enough, so you used to have to use electric or something. I don't know, but yeah, you were also a part of the game ten um, first attempts that Zazob was hosting out in Manukau. Um So there was obviously him, uh, Wowzer. Uh, myself, you and Neil came along, and you know, Sorry, unfortunately, you, you guys weren't a part of it. But you guys were still there playing games on the side, and I think Spirit was actually streaming those games as well. Um, and it was a real cool experience because most of us hadn't had a first to ten. When some of us weren't used to long sets, um, how did you find yeah. the event? I thought it was really cool. Um, I it definitely people need to play longer sets in general it's it like i mean it's it's hard with like different skill levels being so dramatic in new zealand i feel but there are some people who are in like the same bracket it's just that like there's just the top of the cream kind of mo- there's some really good players in new zealand so going up against them it's f- for a first of 10 it's it's going to be rough you know yeah but at least with you you the first of tens the main thing is probably like your mental endurance yeah so you know long set god is uh you know you need to have that mental endurance i actually noticed something as well when i was watching like the first 10 between tanukana and yuyu there there was um one part where tanukana was actually like winning quite dominantly but then you, you slowly brought it back and there was even one point where she had a banana and then she she ended up winning. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> that that potassium and that kind of shot of energy <laughs> might have just you know, like that's why is like that's why I was thinking maybe maybe it is more mental than physical. Yeah. But yeah, it, but you know no, it's it, it's fair because like as I said, not many of us have long set experience. But also when you're at that when you're playing at that level and you're trying to keep that focus that intensity when you're trying to put pressure on an opponent putting it on them for sets in a first to 10 it's really rough and i must admit i wasn't used to it it i mean i think i think for every single set i i got a bit of an ask before i started to feel more um comfortable and when i think about you playing Jin. Um, I can't imagine what that's like, you know, trying to like play sets first to ten with a gin. Yeah, uh, he can be quite difficult, but you know, there are some players like in in FGC like Dan Banter who does really well with gin. Yeah, he's got a very good gin. Yeah, Did I you... think it takes a lot of background knowledge. Yeah, to pl- to to really like because you have you have all the tools to adapt to everyone so it's like which one to use at what time yeah and like you go bro you go oh no you go no just because i know he was maining claudio for a period and then he's yeah. solely a gin main do you feel that's because gin is more the complete character i suppose mm, well claudio did have a rework in season two so I mean, he he could have not liked Claudia, but I I just think Jin's a really good character in general. So I I don't see why not he would use because he because he used to he did um use Claudia and Jin at one point, but then he just decided to switch. Yeah, it's just, it's like the same with me and me and Asuka. It's just like um. I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to say, but Jin Jin is a really strong character. There's there is no doubt. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. Do you take any um? Hmm. Do you take any tips from him, or do you see anything that he does with Jin that you try to implement into your own game plan? I personally should actually um play him more because it. it Gens tend to play quite similar, I feel, because there's just 
some moves that are just really really strong so you you tend to use them quite often yeah and like there are other moves that are very niche so the option selection kind of falls down after that point you don't always you can't just use a move just because you 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 haven't used it that much it, it needs to follow like a, a certain player needs to do something at a certain time after a certain situation kind of thing yeah so he's but, got, so like he's got good damage yeah. and he's got good wall carry um but what is his oki like does he have any oki his oki is not bad i mean there are some people who use his zen to oki some people use uh like four foot three and down twos down four it, it it's not like i wouldn't say he's great at setups but there are some people who can make it work like um cbm some i've seen him always uh do some tricksy stuff at the wall he'll just like back to one do a jump over and do like a a down jab into like a wall standing two <laughs> you know <laughs> It, it, it's like guaranteed i don't even i've tried it but i'm i don't know what he needs like what you, what situation needs to be done in order to get those two guaranteed yeah it's it's quite um complicated but yeah so you've mentioned guess, like sorry you mentioned cbm are there uh do you watch any other um korean or international players uh low high and I do watch Main Man sometimes because he likes, because he's kind of like, it's it's kind of hard to like get into Tekken streamers sometimes because if you don't speak Korean, it's hard to really understand. Well, yeah. CBM's English is really good though, but yeah, it, I can, you can see why it's like hard for like Westerners, yeah, to like uh, like us to get into. Get, to get that like knowledge. the really to get that knowledge yeah, yeah. that in-depth knowledge because i think i think koreans really like grind this game like hard yeah definitely whereas yeah but it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's more like yeah yeah but it's also fair to say like when you start off like watching these videos you will generally go to a main man video or uh, an Aris video a, yeah Aris video or maybe a ripple papu video rip um, you know, yeah. and, and that's not, and that's all good. Um, you know, but that's just discovering the layers of this game. You know, you get something from this player, and then you get something from another player. Um, but yeah, low, uh, what, uh, interesting you say Lohai because he's not really a Jin main. You know, you said Cherry Berry Mango CBM, but um, why Lohai? I found Lohai. I actually started watching Lohai before he became um, EVO champion. I noticed him playing because he he played all sorts of characters. And he was quite, like, he's quite good with, like, many characters. And um, I feel like he has a good read on most players. He has, like, he his knowledge is pretty pretty strong. He's, like, a really strong player, in my opinion. And then he eventually won Evo, and I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> so I had like I had the right I had the right hunch, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, that's cool. I mean, uh, what? Because I mean, he uses like Shaheen, completely different character to Jin, but as you said, he uses a lot of a lot yeah, of characters. He, and here he's playing CBM, I, which you know, like interesting that he's facing a, a Jin. Um, yeah, well, I think they're friends, so. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, well, I just assume. Well, I mean, no offense, but like, I, I just assume a lot of the top players are are friends. You know, they're just friends on Steam and so, uh, as such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, Lohai's played Jin in some streams as well, so it's like it's good to like get a, a vast knowledge from all kinds of players. Yeah, especially they might they might play differently than you. Outside of Korean players, are there any other Jin players that you? That you have what that you've watched or look up to? Um, not the moment, but I actually need to find more because I don't watch Tekken as much as I should. Because there there is a lot you can learn from watching. But yeah, with it's just been a little dry lately because um, there hasn't been any in exciting tournaments to watch. Yeah, I guess. Um. Well, I've asked about 
players, but have you watched any Tekken content, like any Tekken content videos, um, like learning videos and and stuff? Has anything? Have you ever like watched any like you know like that blasted salami and you know any kind of yeah, yeah. videos and such? Yeah, blasted salami and Eris were kind of like the videos I used to watch when I was trying to really get into the game when I was like a really like a beginner because um Eris's videos even though he's like it's just like a you know one take kind of thing he has a really good way of describing like the game concepts and like like how you, how players think or like cuz like Tekken was my first fighting game so I didn't really understand there were also things like the mind game like block punishment with punishment grabs and things like this was just like a whole bunch of things that i didn't know and there was just um eris would be able to like to tell you in the way that you'd understand whereas blasted salami would give you the information you need and it's like concise it's correct it's well formatted it's it's in, very like, it's good to watch yeah you're right it's very scripted as well because aris can kind of yeah like words from you know like coming word from the mouth no filter um but you can tell that there's a lot of thought and analysis and blasted salami yeah. videos but it's all but it's awesome because i mean for a seven minute video you get so much information yeah, and <laughs> he's not getting paid for it as well. It seems like someone. It, it seems like a, a something that, like a team would do, you know. But it's just one dude, and maybe he's got like the odd person that helps him with um, research. Yeah. Well, he he does have a team, but it's not it's not like Bandai Namco is paying them or anything like that. I think it's like I think his teams are like with like this guy called Dinosaur and Fergus. And quite a lot of other people. He's even like talked to Frame Whisperer. He's got Main Man. Like he does podcasts as well. Yeah, Wave Dash. And he talks yeah. to the, yeah Wave Dash. I've always um, found their discussions quite interesting. Yeah, they have a lot of insight with um, all of them together, mm. especially with um, certain certain of them. They like most of them living in different places of the world. Yeah, I give him credit though, because like I think one episode he orchestrated like ten people to be on it. So these are like yeah. 10 people, 10 different priorities, 10 different schedules, and he managed to get them on for an episode. It was like, you know, I, I know what it's like to keep a schedule, but, you know, like, that's 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 good work ethic, man. Yeah, especially they're all in different time zones as well, like Europe, Japan, and there's he even got Ash Len Ash onto the podcast. I think I mentioned it to someone else, but um, I'll ask you, do you feel like the developers really need to focus on, like in terms of marketing their game, should they really focus on players since they're making the content about, you know, because they're so passionate and they make such vital content around their product? Um, like for the players, do you mean like all the players or like certain skill level types of players uh, or various like i remembered that i think they released a video a day or two before second seven was to release on console and it was like a brief breakdown on the game the mechanics the movement i think they had markman voice over like voicing over the information but yeah you know like i'm just saying like it, it would be cool if developers could get players more involved you know like it would, it would have been cool to get tbs to do it or main man or someone from the ticking community that makes the content you know yeah but i yeah it's hard to say though because um tekken's a japanese game and it's quite old so there might be some higher ups that are quite strict on certain things oh yeah definitely they not, did have definitely not eris but i mean like it, anyone more pc you know anyone more um yeah, it is a brand. It is a it is a label. It's got to be presented in the most. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, light. it's it's just a like a hierarchy system as well. They they tend to have, um, so it's hard to say. They had they had a spotlight of, um, content taking content creator once. I think when console released, they had Aris win that, but it was just kind of like I don't even know if it was like 
it was more of an, an award. award. I think it was more of an award. Yeah, yeah it was like Tekken Gamer, Tekken Emperor, yeah. Aris, Con- and a few other things. content creator yeah. or something. Yeah, but not to be rude, but I think Aris won because he was like the first one I kind of like. You could picture it like as soon as they called the names out, I was like, oh yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. he he pumped like so many videos because they were all just stream clips, yeah. but they were just organized after with um no pants helping him i think i don't even know if no pants was helping him at that time (laughs) (laughs) so now i want to get into uh the korean levers and such man because you kind of convinced me to upgrade my stick and stuff so like where do you stand between korean levers japanese levers and custom and like just purely customized levers well i actually started with the stock lever uh, because I had a Razor Panthera, I just had you know a JLF uh, Japanese lever, and I thought it was cool at the time. Um, the corners, feeling the corners was cool, I guess. But I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say because uh, I think making me think think about it now, it's kind of weird how it, it it makes such a big difference, even though you you kind of don't really notice until you really switch between them. But I'd say for Mishima, it's it's taken in general. Korean leave is quite good. Um, especially cause the thing I, the pet, the, the thing I had the most problem with, with Japanese levers is that it was spring. So the tension would eventually get looser and looser. I wanted it to be more consistent. Yeah. Um, and Korean levers were, kind of like good at that because their their tension was uh like rubber or like silicone it it doesn't it's not a spring that eventually stretches out yeah um although you can't feel the 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 tactileness as much it's definitely a lot easier to to maintain if you feel them both i do i do agree that you'll you'll think that the japanese one is a bit more like stiffer but as you said you know throughout time like mm. on a nca stick is a perfect example you feel that stick there's no tension i don't even think it's down forward even works yeah it's it's hard to say because eh? i think japanese sticks were just made to last they were made to survive they weren't they weren't made to like perform at a certain level at a certain like they were they were they're like really sturdy and they're, they're great to start off because you can get them anywhere yeah but I think anyone who's like interested in getting into Korean levers, it's definitely worth a try. Yeah, but you're um, right. It is it is interesting, like getting into Korean levers if you're based here, because you've yeah. really got to outsource your yeah. You've got to know some people, bro. Yeah, well, you you definitely have a lot of influences. Uh, Wowser being one particular one yeah. that helps uh, push the Korean levers. Uh, he did it for me. So Zazob as well. Like he's got so many spear. Um, ball tops and bat tops like he's just got like spears of every arcade you know like look all the pieces of equipment he's got so many spear pieces and stuff <laughs> that, that dude loves his his arcade sticks yeah. man so now i, I get yeah. back to Korea, like like you've got korean lever you have japanese mm. lever ball top bat mm-hmm. top and now you've got this golden lever now that's the one that you're the first one i'd ever seen with a golden lever and it's 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 technically not a Korean lever. It's because it's made by, you know, by an Indonesian guy. So they just call it an Indonesian yeah. an Indonesian stick. So how would you describe the golden lever to a to an onlooker? I'd say a. It's like a custom made lever that's based off the Korean Munchen design. So they took the design and they just because Korean levers, Kore, Korean like arcade stick parts do have slight, like a slight um, negative like l- compared to its ja- Japanese counterparts because because uh, they've had like issues with cannot uh, like connectivity and things like that. Sometimes you have Korean levers just stop working. That's that's actually and, a fair call. Yeah. yeah. I think Wells yeah, the, of Wells's Wells's stick is was known to disconnect a few a few times. Yeah. I think it even disconnected at our team tournament that we hosted. So 
yeah, Jamie had trouble with it. There were tournaments in the States where Korean levers would not like that. That's just like one of those things. It is, it seems like it comes off as if it was not as high quality. Yeah. But that's what this, um, so Golden Lever is like using high quality parts with the good design. It's almost like taking a Japanese car and using European parts or European made parts, if you will. But I mean, it's like a fully customizable lever. Yeah. Whereas most Korean levers are quite specified. You have your different editions and stuff like that. Whereas um, Wazwoo's the guy who made this golden lever, he kind of made everything so it could be adjusted slightly, so you can make things tighter or looser, have a bigger throw, smaller throw. The parts are like quite strong. It's uh, quite expensive though. Uh, yeah, that is like just under three hundred bucks, eh? Like that's just yeah. for the stock, for the stock um, supply. Yeah, yeah, that's the lever. You could buy a stick for three hundred dollars. Yeah. So like when you when when you when we ordered this, it comes with the medium tension rubber grip, and I've stuck with that. But you've gone for the is it? Have you actually gone for the high the the heavy grip or the medium heavy? The medium heavy is just a one up. Yeah, and what's the change between that and the stock uh, the standard uh, rubber grip? I feel like the standard just gets really loose over time. Like not like really loose, but like it's it's already quite light for this one. But then. Because when I first got a lever, it was the same one Wowser had, so it was the um, the Help Me lever, and that one is quite short throw and it was quite high tension. So I guess I could, I could, I guess you could say that I got used to it, but it's just having a high tension would mean faster neutrals, so it's just much better for me. I feel, yeah, it's yeah better for wave dashing and, and electrics just. So I don't have to think about the neutral. It yeah. just comes. It just comes, yeah. Because I mean, yeah. If if you have a Korean lever, you know, when you hold it in direction, you let it go. It instantly goes back to neutral. But some people may hear this and think, but couldn't a downside be that you tire out more because it's a heavier grip? There's a heavier tension. There's more effort you need to put into your wrist. Yeah, that is true. Um, spirit could tell you about that because he always has a quite high tension on his stick and he he always gets quite tired from his wrist bro, <laughs> he plays leo why does he need to have heavy? i know I thinking, why do you need a heavy tension bro i don't know <laughs> just, i guess he just prefers it yeah uh, he, he does but he has been playing devil gym quite a bit lately so yeah but but you know Is yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking, don't put yourself through that, man. Like, Leo, you don't need a heavy tension for Leo. <laughs> Some people just love the fast response. Yeah. It it's, it feels good to have the stick come back to you. Yeah. Because you told yeah. me that in the Jap on a Japanese stick, obviously, it's spring-based. So when you hold it into a... Hold, like, let's just say you're holding it in an up four direction. When you let it go, it does take time for the stick to center itself, like, to put itself back into neutral. But with... Uh, the golden lever, the yeah. way that it's built, you let it go and it pops back to neutral instantly. It's also because it's an advantage of having a Korean lever. It's like having the rubber tension, the silicon tension. The further you away from neutral, the the fa the high the higher tension it is because it's it's like stretching a rubber band. You know, like once it's fully stretched out, it's pretty tight. Yeah, you know. But once you just when you just kind of pull it slightly to the left, like just maybe like a, a centimeter, it won't. It won't feel like it's stretching at all. It's not that tight, so it's kind of like that that concept. Like the further you away, the higher it is. Yeah. The higher tension you are to come back. So, do you recommend the golden lever compared to, say, as well as a, as well as the stick? The fan is it a Fanta? His ones that help me. So I think it's like um, a crown. Yeah, crown. How would you? So would you recommend the gold lever over the crown, or are they fairly even in terms of? what they deliver mm. i'd say if you get like the golden lever it's definitely going to be more customizable it's going to definitely feel quite high quality because like you also get like omron switches the casings fully like made and the bat top is like hand finished so you you have those little details that you notice by having something that's 
put like a, that much effort into making. Um, but it's it's not to say it's a must buy. I mean, it's hard. It's it depends on the the person playing it. It depends on how 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 much you care about your fight stick yeah. and how much because because essentially um, you can recreate the same feel and like the same tension and the 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 throw distance on a a golden lever to the exact same help me lever but it's like why would you do that when you can just buy the help me lever for like a quarter or a fifth of the price it just it just depends on the person really yeah but it, you can, it's, it's definitely a high quality product and i'll um i'll see how long it lasts just to really you know decide that's true if it's I mean, worth it, it. it is kind of fairly new you know like it hasn't had a long long time yeah but i mean you you sold me when we did that night market thing in pakaranga bro well you can you can feel the difference can't you oh absolutely well i'll be honest in the first week i was thinking how the hell am i going to play on this thing but then throughout time you you get used to the tension the feeling of it as well because you know having your hand so high up the stick compared to you know because it's a bat top you know yeah. just, like just even changing the grip itself felt felt weird yeah but you you sold me on the golden lever when we did the night markets <laughs> man i was like was that your was that your goal or were you just trying to show off your lever nice nah, you know when you like something you kind of like you kind of just enthusiastic about it you yeah. want to like share it with people just to so they they can realize like understand what you your your understanding i guess yeah but yeah i I felt like with the the golden lever, like I don't need another lever ever again, kind of thing. Like, it's it's like just the way I want it. So that's the advantage. I normally actually found it found out about the lever because of low high NCPM. Actually, now that you mention it, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, because I mean, didn't Waz was it's like low high cherry berry mango old sun. I think has the gold lever too. Like they feature yeah, on the na- website. That was this this that was this year last year, but it wasn't when I bought it. Um, he, the Ranchu was the other one that had it. That Ranchu. when I bought it, yeah, Ranchu. Yeah, yeah. I remembered when we did the night markets, and <clears throat> you know, I just said, "Look, I'm just trying to do a a gaming night in the community of Pakaranga. You know, just pushing the FGC. I just want to bring up <laughs> second players." And I was like, "I'll get okay. You're free. You're free." And then I hit you up, and then when I tried your stick. I was like, Jesus, this is, this is incredible. Like, I, I was like, at first I was a bit lost because I was like, how do you play on this? Because I think you- Because <laughs> the corners were gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, you don't feel the, the up, you know, like when you do the directions, you usually hear the click on the Japanese sticks, but in this one, you didn't. So it's, just it's like, muffled. Yeah. Yeah. It was just not, not having that feeling of, oh, I know that my direction has been registered. It, it isn't. Um, but yeah. I thought, you know, that was that was a cool night. You know, we just got to play Tekken in front of people and promote the scene. Um, we'd never done anything like that before, but it was really cool. And it was really cool running into people who kind of knew that there was a scene, but they didn't know. Yeah, they didn't know it. how to get into it yeah. or how to. Yeah, there was actually some quite a, there was quite some quite a few players that came that night that I think. Was it was kind of a bad timing though, because they could have. It was like l- near the end of last year, and people were like really keen to come to the offlines. Yeah, but then everything kind of slowed down. Yeah, I just remembered we did it because it was uh, Leroy released that week, or it, he released mm. like pretty recent, and I was like, oh cool, you know, we could just do something and like just do it, do like a pre like a release. A Libre release yeah. type thing, um, but and yeah, that was off- off- during off season as well. Yeah, 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 off season. Um, so it may not have been a good time in terms of like, oh, you know, you want to come to an event? Oh, well, actually, you got to wait till next year. Um, yeah, but you know, it was it was cool. It was it was really fun. It was you, Holly Emperor, um, and Neil, and yeah, we were just playing for the people. Um, Wasn't there one more? No, it was just us. It was just four of us. Oh. But Kobe showed up at once. Oh, Kobe about, showed up yeah. with his dad. 
he was just like walking <laughs> past. He was walking past, and like I'm not being rude, but I recognized because he was he's a tall kid, and I saw the hair, I saw the hair, I saw the glasses, and I just yelled out saying, "Hey!" I was like, "Hey, okay, come on now!" Like the first thing I said to him was, "You can't be here. You can't. You can't just grab a controller and park yourself here for like an hour. This this is for the locals, for the kids. So it's just like you had a few games. Just don't don't hog the setup." And he's laughing, and yeah, we met his dad. It was really good. Um, yeah, we might do another one in the future because um, now we're out of lockdown. But it um, is a cool event. Yeah, I yeah I remember people were walking past thinking, "Oh, what's this?" And it's like, "Oh, we're just we're just guys we play fighting games. We're part of the fighting game scene." Um, and yeah, it, it, yeah, there was there were definitely some people that um, took interest, and we ran into someone who actually was a player. Was he a mate of yours? Like, I feel like you. There was someone yeah there. yeah he he's uh my friend mikey he he well, i knew him since high school and i didn't realize he played ticket so yeah it was it was quite interesting he, he just walked he was actually um helping out with one of the stalls so he just saw her and he might have he just jammed he was actually like pretty pretty good he understood like frames and like like how to set up and baiting and think with punishment and stuff like that. Yeah. There's Great. Al- there's always there's always a like I'd like to think that you know people will kind of discover the scene when they feel the need to you know like when people are are shown that there's depth to this game and then they find it. But it's also cool to host events like this and just kind of see what people's thoughts and perceptions are. And it's like, well, actually, no. There's actually you know, there's, there's there's more to this and such. Yeah, there's there's a lot more to fighting games in general than what most people think of games. You know, like especially Tekken is the thing. I, the thing I like about Tekken the most is it kind of like draws in all kinds of people. You know, you don't have like a generic bunch of uh, personality types. You have a lot of different kind of people. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, bro, it's, it's... there was you, Holy Emperor, me, and Neil sitting in chairs, and I'm sure people were thinking, like, what do these guys have in common? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, if you caught us sitting at a bar, you wouldn't think, like, oh, that's what brings these guys together. Yeah. Do we look like a characters from a show? They're all different characteristics and looks and sizes. It's... Yeah. It's, we we kind of look, kind of looked a bit like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So now we come to the part where half this year's gone by. Very oh, little, gosh. F- very yeah, very little FGC events offline FGC events. We've had a few online tournaments, but ultimately TWT is cancelled. And the memories of Tekken that we had before lockdown were not that good. Um, yeah, but I mean, we had some. I mean, it's just a shame that this whole year has pretty much been scrapped by the TWT. But it makes sense because how many, like, what can you, like, for us, we're fine, but what else can you do around the world? Um, with yeah. Still, yeah. It's still going, so it, it's, it only makes sense. But what it means for the game is kind of, like, what, what, what can we do? What, what do you think's going to happen to the Tekken 7? Do you think that we're going to get a Tekken 8 or do you think there's more DLC here that they're waiting for an opportunity to spring on up spring on us or they're just going to do it online it's there's so many things they could do Bandai Namco don't really have like much communication on what their plans are and that's also like that's like a good and a bad thing you know like most gaming companies nowadays they tend to have like what a roadmap what they want to do but you know, Bandai Namco is kind of secret, secret. You know. Yeah, I just think. I guess he doesn't really. I don't think it would be wise to, um, like to like to have a year of nothing, and then to announce Tekken Eight or to start working on a Tekken Eight. It's just they need they need to. I think they need to do something more. Whether that's what was it like for the other Tekken games? Because. What did they do during these periods? Because obviously, like 
DR was an update to Tekken 5, right? So they didn't really... This yeah. Tekken 7 is one of the only games that they could really patch. I, they didn't patch the other ones because it wasn't on PC, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, because uh, nothing like this has happened before. Um, I did read somewhere that they're looking at updating the FR versions, you know, to add the DLC care. I forgot where I saw it, but I think they could be, um, they could be updating the arcade, you know, FR to get the, you know, the Negan and the Noctis and stuff, which is fine. Um, yeah. I, I don't think, I don't think they should give up on Tekken 7 just yet. I think they should pump out more content <coughs> at least if it's not DLC characters, um, just another update where maybe moves might get changed or new moves get added. I just don't think they should give up on um, Tekken 7 just yet. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of people who think there's enough characters on the roster. They want other things like quality of life changes or new stages, more customization, better net code, things like that. Well, it's- yeah, Main Man did mention something about um, he was reacting to an Aris video and they were talking about uh, you know, tick and bloating and power creeping, how a lot of characters just seem to be incredibly strong in the wall carry phase, you know, in the wall carry area and the damaging phases. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe there's a suggestion where maybe they could kind of bring characters back down to, to Middle Earth. Yeah. <laughs> and the, maybe, the, and maybe that happens happen. a lot. Yeah. That happens a lot to a lot of games, like that have like, seasons if you will it happened to this game called world of war War, War, ah wow Wow. you know wow yeah yeah been around so long things just keep getting added nothing gets taken out you know but i can see like people complaining oh no you took my four forward three out of the game what am i supposed to do you know just complain i can see why the bloating can why why it's happened like they're just they want to add things to change the game but they don't want to remove anything kind of yeah it's it's just piling on. So it, I mean, you could get a reset. One one thing I thought about is that if because uh, ranked players tend to like not have um like you you see all those high level players or streamers that they they tend to complain about their ranks uh, uh like rank not being funny anymore. I yeah, yeah. I did think about maybe doing if they had a seasonal sort of thing and took maybe put more effort into the rank system. Yeah. That might be interesting. Like, have a rating, have like badges, you know? Yeah. Well, well mean, they I do have badges, but like, have something that that people can hold on to. Like, you know, if you've played League, there's like a section where you it tells your rating at different different um, parts. You could, or you can even have rankings for separate characters and things like that. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, I mean, I think Street Fighter um, introduced some new. Like, I think they have introduced like new ranks throughout the yeah, season. Like, so that could be. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. Or like uh rank per season so every season you'd have a ranking for that season and you probably you could get oh like rewards or something yeah. i mean like they could do a lot like maybe maybe uh season one tick and god prime gins only have the golden electric or something like that and then you you see someone with that customization you're like oh my gosh he's a god he's a season one god you know <laughs> yeah imagine if you had something like that like something that like identified you it kind of like connected you to your character in another way whereas other people couldn't you know that's that's like individualism yeah that's yeah. a good idea yeah well i mean yeah i mean i won't i won't go i won't go over it like a record but um like yeah i know a lot of people uh well main men in particular um have talked about like all well, these characters have good wall carry good damage it's like some characters have kind of lost their identity. They lost what made them unique or special in the first place. Um, yeah, their flaws. Yeah, as yeah. well. But I mean, it's yeah, it is a shame that the Tekken World Tour is over. Well, not over, but it's just it's just not happening. Um, and there was a highlight I wanted to show from last year's one, which like it was the hype of the finals. It was the low high and a waste honey match. <laughs> Man. I've always really liked Lohai's playstyle. Yeah. And this was crucial because I think Awais was like one of the last Pakistan players still. Oh, uh, yeah, that rage yeah. drive. You know, Lohai almost lost. Heard around the world, that. man. Heard around the world. 
man. <laughs> Speaking Mohai of almost audio lost just that. like cap- encapsulated the entire moment. That five seconds of oh my god. Yeah. Did you see like right before though? Um, when he had the the back. Uh, he had um, Akuma's back and his punishment whiffed. The wall rising Things- three. The first kick missed. Yeah. Yeah, that could have went really that badly. Could've, that could have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> If yeah, we had a different follow up, that would have ended. Yeah, that one there. Yeah. Because what's that on block? While well, standing three. Things. Uh, now it's funny because that used to be launch punishable, but oh now it's not. It could be. Because if you I, got I a bigger punish, I, actually, punish, I actually don't know the frames. It used to be ja- it used to be launch punishable, but then, you know, it's like. Gigas is 1-2. It was launch punishable and then it was like minus 13 or minus 14. It's probably the same. Oh, gosh. Yeah. No, Fair enough. <laughs> it's crazy, man. But like, we've only had Tekken for so short a time this year. Um, We've had Evo Japan. We've had some online tournaments. Um, But yeah, it's it, it really isn't just the same. Um, and it's kind of funny looking back at Evo Japan 2020 because, you know, Leroy was the problem, and now it's fucking rum. Yeah, it's it's, it's I get, yeah, the shoes on the other foot. They're trying different things. I don't know what they they're trying to do though, but it, it's it's kind of it's hard to say. Eh? It, we we have to wait and see. Yeah. I guess that's why I'm saying that this can't be. Like, this year can't end the way that it could for, for Tekken 7. Like, they should do more to to give the game... Yeah, they need to do more. You know, they can't leave it the way that it, it has been. Yeah. it's It's been, like, really balanced up until now. <laughs> it's, it's crazy how... It's like, maybe they're trying to do something different, but their goal? What is their intention with releasing such strong characters like... Because you know they know what they're doing. They've been balancing characters for years, right? Yeah. And they've they've done it so well so far. It's like suddenly, all of a sudden, it's just changed. It's is it like a new team, or I doubt it. But I don't know. Some people say that they were trying to like I don't know, um, get people to buy the characters and then nerf them. You know? Yeah. But yeah, make sales not not for competitive. But for other reasons, yeah. I swear, man, no one has like you will never see so many Julia fans than you know what they were for Mikio in this uh, in this tournament, bro. Yeah, so yeah. many Julia that was, fans. That was that was really cool though, because before you hadn't seen much like competitive Julia players, mm. and. Julia was kind of like an older character, and when I tried playing Julia, I was like, "Whoa, this this character is technical, you know, mm. and unorthodox, like not a generic down forward one." And actually, quite good, quite a good character, I'd reckon. Mm. I think you'd see more of her the like later because I think it'll take time for like the skills to catch up. Yeah. To, for her to be played optimally. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, do you have any reservations on Book, seeming as he used Leroy this entire tournament, not touching Jin? <laughs> I don't know. He, I mean, I mean, he, they, they, the competitive players want to win, right? So yeah. you can't really blame him, but it's it's hard to say. Um, he did he did um have. So he has his pet peeves with Jin, I've noticed. Because, like, sometimes you get, like, a good uh, wall splat and some things just whiff. Or he'll, like, his his re-wall splats just don't work sometimes. It's just, yeah. Sometimes you'd get tired of playing the same character over and over again, I yeah. guess. Well, what's your pet peeve with Jin? Uh, maybe his range? His, his, his like, his... His twelve and ten frame range. It makes sense that they're, they're short, but it's just um, 
it'd be nice to be more consistent, but you can, I don't think you can really ask for consistency in a game like this. It's like three dimensional and there's too many variables. Yeah. So I'm, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't, um, change Jin in any way, to be honest. Whatever Bandai Namco thinks, because <laughs> he's he's quite good at the moment. So yeah, well, I was going to ask because with the state of the game that it is now, where are you placing Jin? I'd still say he's he's still quite high, like A or uh, A or S, if he's played well, because he has everything. Yeah, it's just. It really, it's really down to the player because he he requires knowledge and a lot of practice, and yeah, his execution can be difficult sometimes. Yeah, with like like the hard combos, but everyone has hard combos, so yeah. But he yeah. still get, he he still gets pretty decent damage um from his combos, like mid sixty damage, which is still yeah. which is really good, you know, um for for. Not as heavy execution compared to the other missions. Yeah, yeah. But you you kind of have to play him, um, for the little wins. <laughs> like, for the little yeah. wins. Yeah, he's not like um a character you 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 pick to win in tournaments, unless you are like really experienced with him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll just get into the uh, final round questions, man. So I hope you're ready. Oh, yeah. Sweet. So the first one is, what's your preferred choice of cuisine on a special night? Define special, though. <laughs> what do you mean by special? Oh, so it could be anything. It could be, you know, that you got an A-plus on your uh, recent ex exam. Um, oh, actually, by the way, question: What what are you you're, what are you studying? What are you studying right now? <laughs> Pro I program. I just finished, but yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Hey. Oh, sweet. Okay. Well, say if, say you got a really good grade on programming, uh, special night, or maybe you found fifty dollars on the side of the road. Uh, what? Well well, if I was in the city, I mean, there's this one place called uh, Sneaky Snacky that I go to in the city. I recommend you try it. They sell these, like, donut burgers. <laughs> and they do, like, the Nashville hot chicken um, burger is amazing. You got me on donut, man. Like, yeah. I, I would definitely give that a go. Yeah, it's got they got the dill mayo and they got pickles and American cheddar. And it's like a balance it's super balanced it's i took uh mia and kobe there uh once they said it was great so nice bro if, you, if you're ever in k road man look at look Dude, for I'm it getting teary, i'm getting teary eyed thinking about it i'm gonna have to look <laughs> it now. all right next you have one. to <laughs> kazuya is greater than devilgen in terms of like lore or just the move set or like this is just a general question Kazuya greater than Devilgen. I think season three Kazuya is amazing, especially the down back four change. That oh, that's ridiculous. Now two A. Yep. That's that's so good. Like I I think if if he kept the like the like I didn't think the electric or the hell sweep change was as good as the down back four <laughs> change. Because <laughs> nah, cool. it's so fast and uh, nah, cool, great bro. for for Next Kazuya. One. How much have you spent on your current arcade stick? Ah, oh, this is this is Chris's question. Like, I'd say maybe about five hundred, five hundred fifty. That's that's all good. That's no, all right. Six hundred, six hundred. Yeah. So that's the lever. I, I, that's buttons and everything. Yeah, it's lever buttons and yeah. Uh, the the fight stick I got on special, so it was only slightly cheaper. Yep. But yeah, uh, roughly, yeah. Okay. Would you want another wall bounce or armor move for Jin? And what's the reason? Oh, I would definitely want an armor move for Jin, to be honest. Because down one and forward one plus two, like they cover each other's weaknesses. So you know, down one tracks to the. Left, I think, 
no wait yeah they actually both track left never mind but um mid and a high um but his his armor move is three plus four and it's not very well used um it's like a high and it's quite slow and it only gives like a a throw on hit but if you ever um get it on the back of an opponent it it actually converts to a combo because it the you can't throw he he doesn't have a throw for the back so if you hit them on the back with that um the three plus four they just kind of float and you can just convert with one two four <laughs> oh sweet yeah so i'd say i'd say an armor move because um his current armor move is not that useful Suggest an activity for someone that's seeking cheap thrills in Auckland. Cheap thrills? Come to offlines, of course. <laughs> you pay $5 just to play in the venue, or you could play 10 pay 15 total, and you get to go into a tournament for Tekken, and you get a lot of thrills, and you get to play the whole day. That's like... <laughs> That's like nine hours, eight hours for a movie. You pay the same price for a movie. You can't even get a movie ticket for fifteen dollars anymore, and that's only like an hour or two. Bro, well, well played, well played. I wasn't yeah. expecting that. <laughs> Book or cherry berry mango? A cherry berry mango. This is an obvious question. Yeah, he's a he's a gin specialist, and I I feel like he's really technical with and. and Cherry berry mango's execution is incredibly like admirable. If if you ever seen his Twitter, you can see him doing electric the the one hundred dollar combo with electric into into electric back forward one micro dash back three forward one two. He can do that with one hand. Bro, have you ever tried it? Like not with one hand. No. Have you tried the combo? Oh, yeah, I can do the combo, Ooh. but. Yeah, it, it was not as consistent as he gets it. It was really, I was getting it quite often, but then they they gave us the easy route, and it's slowly going away. Yeah, <laughs> it's not worth the my. It's not worth one more damage yeah. and less war carry. It's, it's, yeah, the potential of failure is too high now. Mm. So, recommend three animes that need to be watched. Oh, uh, I don't really watch anime. Or, or three films. We could go for three films. I mean, I if it was animes, I'd say you have to like. I watched some when I was a kid, so maybe um, Naruto, obvious one. Uh, I think I might have to switch to films now. Yeah, go ahead, films. Uh, uh, <laughs> um. Any any kind of Jim Carrey movie is a must watch. I think. Uh, huh. This is uh this is quite hard. <laughs> I'll I'll just say those two then. Okay. okay I'll just yeah. Say those two. Yeah. That's all right. Okay. Is Zen One Three too strong as a war carry? Um. I think it's okay. I think it's because it does less damage than uh, um, Zen One Two. It's just that you get an extra hit, and most of the time when you use Zen One Three, you tend to be too close to the wall. To be honest, yeah. And if it and if it's and Zen One Three doesn't really change the fact that. Like you know how Lee and Julia can carry from wall to wall in the really long wide stages. Zen one three doesn't make it possible to to carry through those those stages because of Jin's um m- like the middle section of Jin's combo has hasn't changed. It's basically just the ender. Yeah. Whereas like you know Lee has the uh, they can push themselves forward as they're doing the combo to maximize the wall carry. Jin, Jin still can't really make use of um, that wall to like he can't really get those wall to wall combos. The only thing it really changes is like balcony breaks uh, makes it possible. So it's it's nice to actually have a proper combo for that because you can just like wave dash into 
Zen three one and then get the full war carry if you do a full combo before the balcony break. Mm. Yeah, so I'd say it's I think it's pretty good. Okay. I wouldn't say it's overpowered. <laughs> and who is your waifu caboose? My girlfriend. <laughs> oh no! I, uh, yeah, uh, I don't want you to get in trouble. So okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, either that or or uh, Tifa from Final Fantasy. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll, nice choice, man. Because because they're like you know she's like that. That game just came out. Everyone's like doing art for her and things like that. Yeah, so. no, she's a keeper, man. Well, I just want to thank you again, Caboose, for your time, your tales. Do you have any last-minute words or shout-outs you'd like to make? Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody in the FGC, um, you included. Um, it's always nice to have people who are like willing to help you out and help you grow as a player. Because, you know, Tekken is a difficult game, and you learn a lot about yourself and other people when you play it. I mean, you get you you get the odd personality clashes and dramas, but for the most part, it's a good game to the, bring people together. It's not, it's not like the um, most modern games, you know. Yeah. It has a different community. It has a different aspect, especially because there's not as many people in FGCs compared to like FPS game uh, communities or. MMOs or MOBA games. Yeah. It has a different vibe. It's more friendly. Yeah. Well, I, I, I probably have mentioned it with someone else, but um, someone made a comment to me about like with the FPSs, like the, the more popular mainstream games like Call of Duty and Fortnite. Like if you're a part of the Fortnite scene, you're a part of the Fortnite scene. That doesn't mean you're a part of like a bigger first person shooting scene. You're not a part of Call of Duty battlefield or what are the games that are happening if you say you're if you're a tekken player you know you're a part of the nzfgc that encompasses all games no matter tekken no matter street fighter smash like that's yeah. one thing that's really special you know what i mean it's like you're part of a bigger unit you may play one game different from someone else but you're still a part of the same group yeah yeah I, I just i just yeah. i was like when i saw when i when i heard that I was like, Jesus, that's so true, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's also because, like, since the games are smaller and there's less people, people who, like, play FPSs, if you, if you, someone just quit, no one cares, you know? Like, you know, they don't need you to get better, whereas fighting games, you, you need each other to get better. Yeah, man. Especially with characters being, you know, such a time investment. Yeah. Uh, like, specialists in different play styles with the same set of tools it's it's crazy how 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 much of a difference it makes from just a player would you consider uh, before we go would you consider yourself a gen specialist i mean yeah i i mean i only really play gen so <laughs> yeah. I, I only i don't I, I don't i fiddle around with other characters but i eventually forget um like the the muscle memory, whereas Jin's kind of like more set in stone. So yeah, at the moment it's it's mainly Jin. Um, we'll have to see what kind of other characters there are, and um, potentially in the next Tekkens, I guess. In the next Tekken, or or in the next the update, next... or whenever. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, thank you again, everyone, and we will catch you again another time.